This is Eyewitness News, first at 10. In today's COVID update from the governor's office, it confirmed nearly 300,000 vaccines administered in just the past 24 hours. And within the last week, over 1.4 million vaccines have been distributed. Now there are one in three New Yorkers who have gotten the first dose and one in five who are fully vaccinated. And I'm in fact getting my first dose tomorrow. Here in the Mohawk Valley, more than 180,000 residents have at least one dose of the vaccine and about 125,000 have completed the vaccine series. To schedule your appointment through any of the state sites, just visit their website, mieligible.com. And speaking of COVID vaccines, they have become more accessible, but now there's talk about a booster shot later this year. A local medical physician explains what's known so far about this possible shot, how it works, and if it's necessary for people who are fully vaccinated. Reporter Jasmine Allen has that story. Over the past few months, three new variants of the COVID virus emerged, leaving many of us wondering if the vaccines are able to protect against these mutations. Both Pfizer and Moderna are looking specifically because of the mutations, for, again, from UK, South Africa, Brazil. What they're looking at is, okay, we know that this does have somewhat of an impact on the effectiveness, so they're actually looking at how can we modify the vaccine so that it takes those those changes into account. And that could mean a booster shot. Dr. Hall explains that the Pfizer and Moderna second doses are a form of a booster shot, so developing another one down the road would reinforce the antibodies against the virus. And now it sees the native virus. So it's kind of sitting back going, yeah, okay, fine. But now it's like, hey, wait, I've seen this before. In fact, I've seen this twice before. I know what this is. And so it revs it up that much faster and it fights it off before it can actually take hold and cause you to be sick. A couple of weeks ago, Governor Cuomo's office confirmed the first case of the Brazilian variant in the state. Dr. Hall says a booster shot may be necessary for one of two reasons. We recognize that your body's ability, your immune system's ability to recognize the invading protein and to fight it off decreases over time. The second one is maybe there is enough been enough mutation that the vaccines that we currently getting that we're getting now may lose significant effectiveness against the new variant. There's still no word yet on if and when a COVID booster shot will be available. Reporting Jasmine Allen, Eyewitness News, first at 10. There's no doubt the pandemic has changed how much time many of us spend behind a screen as work, school and events have all gone virtual. And in turn, our reliance on reliable Internet has grown. Our capital correspondent Karina Capabianca has more on how the state's budget will make the service more affordable for low income New Yorkers. Within about 60 days, Internet service providers in New York State must offer affordable plans to low-income households. The cap is $15 per month, including taxes and fees for a basic plan, or $20 for a plan with greater download speeds. To qualify, the household must be eligible for the National School Lunch Program, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, Medicaid, the Senior Citizen Rent Increase Exemption, the Disability Rent Increase Exemption, exemption or is a recipient of an affordability benefit from a utility. While the Alliance for Quality Education had sought completely free internet for low-income families, the organization says they're happy to see this provision in the budget. We are thinking that this, that remote learning, particularly for students and teachers, remote learning for some is not going to go away anytime soon, especially in light of the uncertainty around coronavirus and how so um, quick vaccinations can curb yet another wave. Bill Ferris with AARP New York says the measure will also benefit older New Yorkers to help connect them with their families and health care professionals virtually. He also says the Public Service Commission is being required to examine and map broadband in the state. If you have a low income benefit for Internet access and it really doesn't exist in your area, it doesn't really serve the purpose of the intent of the legislature. So these proposals go hand in hand, find out where it is and then make it affordable. 
The state is also partnering with Schmidt Futures and the Ford Foundation to provide free internet to about 50,000 students in economically disadvantaged areas through June of 2022. In Albany, Karina Capabianca. Be sure to get our CNY homepage app so you can stay up to date with all of the latest local news. And before we go to break, here's a preview of your weather with our chief meteorologist, Colleen Hurley. Colleen. We're quiet and clearing out now. We've got a very warm day on tap for tomorrow. Then April showers return on Sunday. Details next. Now, your eyewitness weather forecast. We got to take a look at this time lapse I took from this afternoon. Some showers going through, and look at the sunset. Very orange for us tonight. Creamsicle color almost off to the west. It was a beautiful end to the day. We had lots of uh, crisp. Crepuscular rays as well, those sunbeams there, are sometimes called God rays as well. We saw a lot of those this evening and just a very, very nice sunset. Nice end to the day with a quick little needed shot of rain. Didn't do much to help our pollen count though. Unfortunately, that tree pollen still in the higher end range is brought to you by the Central Association for the Blind. And we are going to expect that to increase tomorrow, but some showers on Sunday may help to bring that a little bit back down. Now we're sitting at 57 degrees right now. We've cooled off quickly since we lost the sunlight today, but we were nice and mild. We actually got into the upper 60s. Few places hit 70 earlier on this afternoon. We have a nice, very light breeze out of the southeast. Good sleeping weather again tonight. Our lows will only get in the mid to upper 40s to around 50 in some spots. So pretty mild like we were last night. Very similar temperatures. Now tomorrow, it's going to be summer-like. Maybe you're heading to the green, and in the morning, it's going to be still chilly where we are right now, 57 at 8 a.m., but we get into the 70s by noontime, mid-70s in the afternoon. I mean, it really doesn't get much better than that. S sunny and mid-70s, and if you're grilling in the evening, we're going to be very, very warm. 77 at 4 p.m. Dinner time, 78 degrees. You'll see mostly sunny, nice and dry there, so perfect evening for that tomorrow evening. And we do have to bring the UV and Index forecast back a little earlier than expected because of this high heat and sunshine tomorrow. We'll see the UV index up in the six to seven range, which means you can get burned in as little as 20 minutes. Make sure you're putting on sunblock and wearing that protective clothing tomorrow. It is going to feel more like summer than spring for us. We'll be partly cloudy at times, but still plenty of sunshine tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow night, clouds roll back in, and then we're looking at showers coming in for Sunday. Sunday afternoon, here's a, some showers, and those continue into the evening as well. We're going to pick up more 
more rain than we did today, looking at about a half an inch at least in most places there on Sunday. So tonight we're down to the upper 40s. Really great sleeping weather. We have that nice light breeze out of the southeast. And tomorrow, very warm, even hot, I think I have to say. 78 degrees. For the first time this year, that'll be the warmest day. Some places may even hit 80 degrees tomorrow afternoon. Mostly sunny skies. Really nice day there. Showers for your Sunday. And then daily chances for showers next week. A much busier pattern there. We're trending cooler for Monday, so we'll be in the 50s there. But 60s again on Tuesday. And we do gradually cool. You'll see we drop off to the mid 50s at the end of the week. It looks even cooler beyond the seven day. We've got more of your local news uh, coming up next. David Edelstein has your sports news. Stay with us. Man, can't have one calm day, right? No? Yeah, oh, I'm already talking. Did, did you not hear me? Uh, <laughs> there are no scripts, by the way, because that's where we are on all this, because, you know, I'm doing everything all by myself. I have the script here. So we're just going to, we're just going to. It's time for Eyewitness Sports. The Leader Comets were playing their first game since March 10th. After the past 10 games in a row have been postponed, the Comets getting back to practice, then going back to quarantine. Finally, they got a chance to drop the puck against the Rochester Americans. And at the Adirondack Bank Center tonight, there were about 400 fans. Early in the first period, they were going back and forth. And um, the Comets wound up getting the puck, turning it over and bringing it down the ice. And then a quick pass over to Mitch Elliott, who slams one. That one bounces off the post. Now, the fans who were there thought it went in. The lights actually started flashing. The horn nearly went off. Music was playing. But look at that slow motion. Just barely missed. So still no score, but we're still in the first period. The Comets now going down the other way. The Rochester Americans took the 1-0 lead, actually. And then the Comets able to put this one away. Sam Annis was back off the pass. And then Stevens with the little backhand to put it away. So it's tied 1-1. And now a little bit later in the second, we got Sam Annis on the side. And tell me if you've seen this play before. Sam Annis said after the game, it's kind of a trick that's worked for him. Now that he's back with the Comets, he just put it right back in action. Gadjevic crashing the net for his ninth goal of the season. That makes it 2-1 Comets, but the Comets stop there. The Americans tie it up shortly after that and then take the lead with two more in the third to win it 4-2. And then in men's basketball tonight, Utica College men's basketball hosted its first ever game. Now, it's not their first time in the E8 tournament semifinals tonight, hosting number three, Nazareth, but it was their first time playing one of those games at home. Right there, Chris Green, who had 12 points tonight, part of a nine-point run for Utica College, a run to end 
in the second, put UC up by six. Then Avery Croston gets the layup. He had 13 points tonight. And shortly after that, going the same way, Darius Hopkins, who had 12 points to be third on the team, sinks one. Part of a 7-0 run. UC now up by 11. They were down two at halftime, but suddenly things are clicking. All of a sudden, Kobe Lufkin able to take the basket. He led with 16 points. Part of a 5 to nothing run all adds up. Utica wins the game by 10. Pioneers head coach Sean Coffey said before the game that, you know, it would have been too easy early on in the season to throw the towel in and not play at all. But instead, this is the moment they've been waiting for. Many other schools didn't even get a chance to compete this year. And, uh, and some, you know, other schools, even within our league, it was kind of a, you know, an approach of developing a bit and throwing some young players out there in a shortened year. And, you know, maybe they were in kind of a rebuilding mode, which we just couldn't. We have not thought like that at all. It's about winning. It's about competing. It's about getting better. Um, I just don't know any other way to do it other than try to win. And, um, and the guys are right there with me. So we're shoulder to shoulder in our, our mentality as far as this wasn't just to kind of roll the balls out and try to get some kids some experience. This was, we've, we've had the experience. We were ready to kind of take that next step. Pioneers advance to play in the finals now for the first time since 2018. The game is on Sunday. In high school basketball, local student athletes going Division I. New Hartford junior Kaya Henderson announced today that she's committed to play women's basketball at Ohio State. Henderson is New Hartford's all-time leading scorer, and she's on track, if she keeps things up, to break the Section 3 scoring record next season. So for now, that's all for sports, but go check out seeingmyhomepage.com for all your other top sports stories, including some highlights of Waterville football from tonight. For more eyewitness news after the break. So stay friendly and stay tuned. Eyewitness News First at 10 continues. If you've recently eaten tomato pie from either Roma Sausage and Deli's locations on Washington Mills or at Utica here in Oneida County, you could have been exposed to hepatitis A. An employee recently tested positive and may have exposed customers. The hepatitis vaccine is available if given within two weeks of exposure. The most common symptoms for hepatitis A are yellow skin or eyes, stomach pain or fever, fatigue and joint pain. The Oneida County Health Department is currently setting up hepatitis A vaccination clinics for April 10th through the 13th. Visit ocgov.net to schedule your appointment. 
Health and, Herman's, Health and Human Services says hundreds of thousands of Americans recently signed up for ACA health insurance plans, and the Biden administration wants uninsured Americans to know they can continue to sign up. Alexandra Lamone is in Washington, D.C. with the details. So far, half a million Americans have signed up for health insurance under the Biden administration's special enrollment period for the Affordable Care Act. And the Health and Human Services Secretary, Javier Becerra, says even more people qualify. For Americans who have no health insurance and are afraid they may end up catching COVID, uh, I would urge you to take advantage now. According to HHS, because of the recently passed COVID relief bill, the American Rescue Plan, nearly 15 million Americans who currently lack health insurance qualify for financially subsidized plans. Plus, HHS says 80% of those already enrolled may now qualify for a cheaper plan. They could qualify for a plan that might cost them as little as $10 a month, and in some cases, maybe even less than that. Because of the pandemic and in an effort to allow as many Americans to sign up for Affordable Care Act plans, the administration extended the special enrollment period through August. And all you have to do is go on to healthcare.gov and start your coverage. If you do it today, you probably will have health care insurance starting by May 1st. In Washington, Alexandra Limon. We'll close out the broadcast with one final look at your weather forecast when we return.